The air-to-air -air engagement is a highly fluid and difficult collection of tactics to master. It will probably represent the most difficult challenge in rounding out your Hornet training. Today's weapons almost guarantee that shots will be taken at long ranges. You may never even see your opponent. Early detection is critical. The radar is the primary target acquisition tool. If you are not familiar with the radar system, a review of the navigation and radar section will be of benefit to you. Select the radar contact and evaluate it using the IFF. If it's hostile, begin maneuvering for the engagement. The F-18 Hornet uses three basic weapons in air-to-air -air combat. The AIM-120 AMRAM medium-range air-to-air missile and the AIM-9 Sidewinder short-range IR missile. Additionally, the Hornet uses the Vulcan 20mm cannon. We'll discuss air-to-air -air weapons, tactics, and countermeasures in topics to follow. Things happen fast during an engagement, but they're manageable. Know your aircraft, its systems, and abilities. There are three types of pursuit, each having a specific function as it relates to modifying your relative aircraft position. To employ pure pursuit, follow a bandit's flight path continuing along the path he previously flew. Match the bandit's speed so that your closure rate is neutral, keeping the velocity vector right on your opponent's aircraft. Increasing your closure rate while in pure pursuit has the effect of widening your turn radius. Eventually, you'll need more and more Gs to maintain pure pursuit. To improve on the pure pursuit intercept, execute what is known as a nearest collision intercept. Lead the contact, tracking in a straight line, and slowly bring him to center. Turn into the direction of the contact's aspect angle, flying toward a collision. Try about 30 degrees and work from there. If the bogey seems to move back towards center, offset a little more. The idea is not to fly a perfect collision course, but to improve some on the pure pursuit and speed the time to intercept. Lag pursuit allows you to open distance between your aircraft and the opponents and relax your turn posture, maintaining your speed and position behind the opponent. Lag pursuit is accomplished by placing the velocity vector of your aircraft behind the bandits and holding it there. Lag pursuit is easy to maintain but does not gain you any ground. It does give you time to watch for a mistake or recover from a blackout. If you're having a tough time staying with the bandit, try dropping back to a slight lag pursuit and reevaluate before pressing the attack. In lead pursuit, you place the velocity vector in front of the bandit to fly inside his turn radius and close your distance as rapidly as possible. If not used properly, lead pursuit can cause your aircraft to fly in front of the bandit or overshoot, putting you on the defensive. Use lead pursuit to close distance. You are having to turn harder than your opponent to lead, so watch for overshoot and be sure to maintain speed. As you close on the contact, select your longest range weapon, the AIM-120 AMRAM. Interrogate the bogey with IFF. If the contact is a bandit, shoot when you get a cue. Continue pressing, switching to sidewinders, and looking for a pre-merge kill. At the merge, you want 350 plus knots before executing a hard turn into the bandit. Switch to guns when you're out of missiles or inside minimum range. If you find yourself defensive, execute a gun's defense or try to extend and exit the fight. Just be sure to have the altitude and speed to prevent the bandit from turning and running you down. The following section comprises a course in Basic Fighter Maneuvers, or BFM. Offensive maneuvers are designed to get your aircraft into a position to employ weapons. They all have specific circumstances in which they should be used. Competent BFM requires plenty of practice. The lag roll is used to bleed off excess energy when you're in danger of overshooting the enemy. To set up for the lag roll, you should be in lag pursuit. The idea is to roll 90 degrees to the defender's plane of turn, pull up to decelerate, then roll back into the defender and pull for the kill. The high yo-yo is similar in purpose to the lag roll. It's designed to prevent overshoots while maintaining energy by using the vertical plane rather than piling on additional Gs. Assuming the defender is turning in the horizontal plane, you roll out and take the vertical plane, pulling back on the stick and rolling until inverted. Then you continue to pull back while rolling until you're back in the horizontal plane. The result of the maneuver is a decreased angle off the target's tail without the excessive loss of energy experienced using a lag roll. 
The low yo-yo is designed to increase energy rather than bleed it and increase lead angle enough to take a shot. You'll roll nose low out of plane with the bandit until your nose is below and well ahead of the defender, cutting across the defender's turning circle. At this point, you can ease your turn and fly a fairly straight path to intercept the bogey. Scissors, or flat scissors, are a series of turns performed in a defensive posture among two aircraft in the same plane. Each aircraft is attempting to get on the other six by turning left or right towards the other, only to cross each other with excessive angle off preventing a shot. Several cycles of turning into each other may be encountered depending on the two aircraft's speed differences. The AIM-120 AMRAM is an active, radar-guided, all-aspect, medium-range air-to-air missile with a maximum range of 90,000 feet. The AIM-120 has its own radar, allowing you to fire and forget. Select the AIM-120 using the left bracket key. Select a target using your air-to-air -air radar as discussed in Navigation and Radar. Several new symbols will be used in the HUD for air-to-air -air deployment. Most noticeable is the circle centered on your aircraft waterline. This is called the Normalized In-Range Display, or NIRD, and is available only when targets are selected with radar and the weapon is selected. It is part of the display system used to get you in the weapons launch envelope. Part of this display is the minimum and maximum range indicators. Inside the NIRD is your relative range bar. As you close on the selected target, the range bar will move counterclockwise within the NIRD. Once it is between the R-min and R-max points, your target is within the range of the selected weapon. The target designator box, or TD, indicates your radar's line of sight to the target. The steering dot visible in the HUD represents the lead angle steering and is used to compute the necessary lead. Maneuver to position the steering dot inside the NIRD. Receiving the shoot cue, pull the trigger and launch your weapon. The missile will track the target on its own. The missile may take up to 20 seconds to reach the target at a distant range. Use the 5 key for a view of the target or the 7 and 8 keys to check the progress of the missile itself. Once the missile impacts, check to see if the target is still on your radar. If so, look to shoot another missile. Switch to sidewinders as range decreases. The AIM-9M Sidewinder is a short-range infrared missile which relies on heat signature to track its target. The AIM-9M variant is an all-aspect missile which can continue to track the target regardless of their heading. A rear hemisphere shot provides a superior heat signature to a frontal attack, increasing the AIM-9's ability to continue tracking. The radar in your aircraft acts to cue the missile prior to launch, with the IR seeker head taking over once the missile is away. Slaving the IR seeker head to the radar acts as a safety and provides precise targeting. For information concerning the radar, review the nav and radar section. If you have previously damaged an aircraft, it's possible that you've knocked the engine out and there isn't enough heat to lock onto. The indication of a good heat signature is a high-pitched tone emitted from the missile indicating it has found a source. In the event you have no radar, the AIM-9M can be fired bore sight or straight ahead. Since it's guided by infrared signatures rather than radar, it may be able to lock onto a target directly in front of you after launch. Firing the Sidewinder bore sight can be extremely dangerous, however, since it cannot distinguish between friendly and enemy aircraft once it's in the air. The maximum range of the 9M is 5 to 7 nautical miles depending on target aspect. The AIM-9M has a solid propellant rocket motor with a burn time of only a few seconds. It is extremely high acceleration at first, then relying on inertia to continue towards its target. The 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon is a very effective weapon capable of a tremendous amount of damage. However, it is only effective well within a mile. When you first select gun, the HUD will display the weapon type, the number of rounds remaining, in a statometric reticle. The statometric reticle is a reference circle with a pipper located at the center. The statometric reticle will only appear if there are no targets selected in radar. The diameter of the reference circle permits you to estimate the target range visually. If a target's wingspan fits within the circle, then you are within range to fire. 
When a target is selected on radar, the gun will go into director mode. The director reticle will appear on the HUD. Each tick mark of the reticle represents 1,000 feet. Just outside the reticle is the gun maximum range indicator. This will move as the relative aspect of your target changes. The reticle is generally in the vicinity of the aircraft's bore sight. The more stick you apply, the more it deflects. This is not because the bullets are moving, but because your aircraft is moving relative to the bullet's trajectory. The lower right of the reticle is the range rate. To the inside of the reticle is your in-range indicator. Tracking your target with the target designator box, maneuver to bring the box inside the reticle. When in range and the target designator box is in the pipper, you will receive a shoot cue. Hold the trigger for about half a second to a full second. The key is to be able to do it against a maneuvering opponent. To get a kill in with a head-on pass, you will have to line up the enemy carefully and maintain a steady hand. Start firing early at roughly a mile out and hold for the pass, two seconds maximum. Try to keep the reticle steady on the enemy aircraft for the entire shot. The reticle will have a tendency to jump. This is perfectly normal as the radar is updating its data. The potential for a head-on collision is high, so be ready to break hard into the bandit and initiate a dogfight if you fail to kill through the head-on pass. The high angle off, or snapshot, basically occurs when a bandit flies across your windscreen. You have very little time to aim and you must shoot ahead of the bandit if you're to have any chance of hitting it whatsoever. Don't try to fly the bullets onto the target. Aim ahead and let the bandit fly through the projectile stream. There is no simple trick here, just a good eye and lots of practice. The Hornet has three systems to aid in avoiding missiles. The first is the Electronic Countermeasures, or ECM, system. This system attempts to jam enemy aircraft radar, making it difficult for the enemy to lock onto your aircraft and launch missiles. The downside is that if enemy SAMs or aircraft have not already located you with radar, the ECM system can highlight your aircraft and give your position away. Standard procedure is to activate ECM system only after you are painted by enemy radar or if you are in a seed type role. Countermeasures are a limited supply of expendables ejected from your aircraft to disrupt the guidance systems of heat seeking and infrared guided missiles. Chaff consists of hundreds of small strands of metal designed to confuse enemy radars and missiles. The amount of chaff on board is indicated on the left DDI and is released with the semicolon key. Chaff is effective only for a short period of time. Thus, when you deploy it, you should also turn the aircraft to complicate the missile's guidance solution. The idea is to have the missile off your wingtip, release a chaff bundle or two, and turn into the missile, forcing it to overshoot your aircraft by exceeding its turning radius. Flares are designed to confuse heat-seeking missiles by generating, for a very short time, a high-intensity heat source to divert the missile from your own engines. The single quote key is used to deploy one flare. Unless you know, based on an enemy aircraft type, for example, whether a missile coming at you is an IR or radar-guided variant, you should release both chaff and flares at the same time when performing evasive maneuvers. Use countermeasures liberally as you maneuver. The radar warning receiver, or RWR, is the key to surviving in the air-to-air -air environment. Try to position enemy aircraft off the left or right wing if you feel they are going to be an immediate missile launch threat. This way you'll be able to maneuver quickly if a launch is detected. A successful gun's defense involves preventing the opponent from getting you in his gun's envelope and failing that, making yourself very difficult to hit once inside the envelope. There are two factors that define a gun's envelope, range and position. The easiest to deny is range. If you don't get close to your opponent, they won't be able to gun you. To deny position, you need to execute a hard break turn. That is, a maximum G turn into your opponent. If the bandit is already in the envelope, continue your turn. Remember the bandit is trying to pull lead on your aircraft to get a shot. By turning hard, you have just made it very difficult for them to do that. However, you've jumped into his plane of turn, allowing him to open fire if he can generate enough lead angle. If the bandit continues to track your aircraft and manages to pull lead on you, continuing your turn is fruitless. Roll your aircraft 90 degrees left or right and perform a maximum G pull. As the bandit follows, continue to slowly roll away and pull hard. 
Keeping sight of a bandit with a low angle off is almost impossible, so keep a hard pull on the aircraft using a nose down attitude and pick up some airspeed. Continue to turn and look around until you can pick up the bandit visually and attempt to gain ground again. A the key to missile avoidance is early detection. Once you get a threat warning, try to determine if it's from an aircraft or SAM site. Use your radar warning receiver in conjunction with harm mode. If the threat is unavoidable, beware of a launch warning. If you get a launch warning, you must immediately determine where the missile's coming from. If you can't locate it, you're as good as dead. Use the radar warning receiver and look for the inbound missile as you prepare for a last ditch missile defense. Once you locate the missile, you have two options, run or evade. If you feel you're at the edge of the missile's envelope, turn to put the missile on your tail. Go into a shallow dive and punch in the afterburner. This is the fastest way to open distance. As the missile closes, watch it carefully. If it's still tracking at four miles, think about an evasive maneuver. At about two miles, deploy chaff and flare as you turn into and through the flight path of the missile. Once you start the maneuver, you're either turning to help the missile solve its tracking problem or turning to help yourself survive. Force an overshoot. Reevaluate and turn to force more overshoot if necessary. Continue dropping flare and chaff. Your first priority is to locate the missile. Use the radar warning receiver to locate the probable source of the launch and then use your eyes to find the smoke plume of the missile if possible. Move immediately to a last ditch defense. Put the missile on your wing. As the missile closes, be patient. Make the SAM commit to a direction. At approximately two miles, release chaff, flare, and turn hard right through the missile's flight path. If the missile does not immediately explode behind you, Dump chaff and flare and roll 90 to 180 degrees downward, then pull hard, forcing the missile to try and pull lead again and hopefully overshoot. When the missile explodes, reassess your situation, looking for altitude and airspeed. Watch for other missiles. Many times has a second or third missile killed a pilot after they were out of airspeed, altitude, or ideas. Outrunning a SAM is generally fruitless. Make use of terrain whenever possible.
Contact CATC. 